Atheist faces death, witnesses future events, calls for action. Have you ever pondered the profound insights that could emerge from a near-death experience? Imagine a journey beyond the veil of mortality, where one witnesses the intricate tapestry of human existence unfold before their eyes. Join us as we delve into the captivating account of a skeptic-turned-believer whose brush with death unraveled a chilling prophecy for the future of mankind. Are you ready to explore the enigmatic realms of consciousness and confront the unsettling truths that lie beyond? Were you shown the future at any time? Oh, that's a tough one. You can say no, skip it, or I can leave it out. But I'll share it, and you can decide. I don't want to scare anyone. That's not my intention when I talk about it. So, I was at a dinner party with friends who had just moved to Vancouver. Suddenly, I found it hard to breathe and felt a lot of pressure in my chest. I thought maybe I was getting sick. Honestly, I didn't know what to think. It got so bad that I went to their bathroom and stood in front of the mirror. I told myself, Heather, if you don't ask for help, you're going to die. It was a scary feeling. I came out of the bathroom and said, I need an ambulance. The music stopped and everyone looked at me. They asked, what's wrong? I insisted, I need an ambulance right now. My fiancé wanted to take me to the hospital himself, but I refused. I was scared because he didn't know the area. Anyway, I don't know what happened exactly, but I ended up in the car on a dark highway, not knowing where we were going. The feeling of dread kept growing, and I felt like I was going to die. Eventually, I just accepted it. Suddenly, darkness crept over me slowly from behind until everything was pitch black. It was so dark, like nothing I'd ever seen. But strangely, I felt comfortable. It was like floating in a vast, empty space, with no fear or stress, just curiosity. I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face, that's how dark it was. Then far away, I noticed a tiny spark of light. It grew bigger and seemed to be coming closer. I watched, curious, unable to move or run. I felt like I was floating. As it got closer, I noticed something. It looked like a tunnel, almost like a swirling cone. Shades of grey mixed with sparks of brighter light. It kept coming closer and closer until it was right above me. Suddenly, I started moving upward, but I couldn't control it. I felt nervous because I didn't know what was happening. I tried to touch the sides to stop myself, but it didn't work. I felt out of control and scared. As I kept going up and over, I saw an extremely bright light at the top of the tunnel. Then suddenly I was there. I was stunned by the brightness. It was like a blue-white light with silvery tones. It wasn't just a simple color, there was depth to it. And then I saw people coming out of the light, like at a football game with bright stadium lights. There were a lot of them, maybe a hundred or more. I was rude and told them to stay away from me because I didn't know who they were. But then I recognized some of them, like my great-grandmother and other family members who had passed away. It was confusing. I was totally lost. I thought to myself, what's happening? Where am I? I was quite rude actually. Then my great-grandmother came closer and told me, Heather, you've passed away. I couldn't believe it. She was the one who informed me because I had no idea. That's when I started to notice the incredible light. It was so loving and comforting, beyond anything I could imagine. I fell to my knees, crying. I didn't want to be there. I hadn't even lived yet. It felt like it was all too short. Then there was another presence, a higher energy. I could feel its higher vibration. It assured me that everything would be okay. Yes, I had passed away, and we went straight into a life review. It happened quickly but was quite fascinating. I wasn't afraid of anything, not even of this presence. It felt like it was just there, communicating telepathically. Even when my grandmother spoke to me, it was all in my head instantly. During the life review, it wasn't like watching a movie. I was completely immersed in my life, beyond just the five senses. One of the most interesting things I learned was how we affect each other. Even our thoughts about someone can be sensed by them subconsciously. They absorb it and incorporate it into their self-understanding. When we were kids, I had a friend who we often argued with. Our friendship was strange, a mix of meanness and bonding. I said things to her that she took to heart, and vice versa. Our relationship was always an energy exchange, even when we fought. So, you never know how a little bit of kindness to somebody can change their life. 
There were some people that I had absolutely no idea that they took it on as something that was so incredibly helpful to them that it altered their course. Wow, you know, like that was huge to me. Absolutely huge. I lived in a group home with six girls. I often told them, you're more than just your body. Many girls end up in tough situations like stripping because they lack a strong foundation. There was one girl I talked to who avoided going down that path, which was amazing to me. Life reviews aren't just about seeing the bad things you did. You also see the wonderful connections you had with people and animals and how you interacted with the world around you. You feel, see, sense and know exactly how others felt as if you're part of them. I learned that I chose my parents as part of my soul family and we made agreements before I was born. But not everything is planned out because we have free choice. I saw how karma works and was shown past lives, including one where I caused harm to someone. I realized that some of the things that seemed random actually had deeper reasons. I learned about energy and the human body because that's what I was going to bring back. I quickly absorbed information about how the body works energetically, including the auric field, energy points, and how emotions affect the body. Our brains are incredibly powerful and can shape our experiences. We have the power to hinder or help ourselves. We emit frequencies that attract similar energies. We can learn to move and call in energy, almost like organizing files in a cabinet. Sometimes we store emotions away because we're not ready to deal with them. I also went to the Crystal City, which was immensely beautiful. It would be kind of like um, I was 15 miles to 20 miles out. And I wasn't there very long. Somebody came to meet me. I didn't get to see their face or anything. I didn't. I just knew it was a body. Somebody who really liked me because they gave me a great big hug. Basically, it's not my time to be home. So I was like, oh, okay, and then gone. Immediately gone from there. I was shown a place where souls go to heal after their lifetimes, especially if those lives were traumatic. This healing place had pools of water with incredible healing properties, all surrounded by white marble columns. Some souls stay there for a long time, depending on their life experiences. There's also the Hall of Records, where I saw my own book containing records of my many lifetimes. It was thick, indicating I've lived many lives. During my experience, I had insights into the diversity of souls and their journeys after death. Like-minded souls gather together to work through their life agreements with the help of mentors and a cosmic board. It felt oddly familiar, as if I had known it all before but forgot upon being born. Beings from different dimensions, some glowing lights and others resembling extraterrestrials, gathered around a table to assist. They showed me different ways to travel through time, like wormholes, which felt rapid but turbulent. Some could will themselves to a destination, like walking through an invisible door. It was more vivid than anything I've experienced in life. My family didn't support my sharing of these experiences, leaving me on a solitary journey. Witnessing scenes of human conflict and suffering throughout history was distressing, emphasizing the urgent need for unity and understanding to overcome divisions and biases. I didn't want to come back at first. I cried and felt like I hadn't started my life's purpose yet. I wanted to go back and fulfill my life's plan. I was told coming back was going to be far more difficult than before I died. On a physical, emotional, mental, psychological level, it was all going to be extraordinarily painful. And there were things that physically I wasn't going to be able to heal. And I was going to live with that pain. So, I was to be prepared for that. Then I was asked again, do you want to come back? Yes, I do. Because that, when I was over on the other side, I firmly believed that I could do a lot of that work. We're connected to each other. I think if we, if we could just have that understanding, how connected we are to one another, and, and, and let go of all our, our false beliefs of one another, and really have that understanding. That we are energetically a part of each other at all times. We're all human, period. You don't have to have all these divisions and everything that have been created. I think if my wish could be anything, if we could just get to that understanding.